I can't even know why these are PDFs. Why are these application? This is a PDF? What? The disk image is invalid. What? This is not an invalid disk image. I literally mounted it and it worked just fine. I was just I was hoping that that didn't that wouldn't happen. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. As you can see, I have in front of me this iBook G3 clamshell. What, what what's underneath this thing? Today, I'm going to be attempting to install macOS 10.4 Tiger onto this machine. Now, uh, some iBook G3 clamshells could run Tiger. However, this one does not have a FireWire port, so it cannot uh, natively support Tiger without having to use some programs such as ex post facto. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's go ahead and launch the Camino browser. Let's search for ex post facto on Google. This computer should be able to use, yeah. Let's see whether I can actually access the website. Yes, I can access the website, it looks like, yep. All right, it looks like here is what our disk uh, image is gonna be, so let's click on it. All right, this is why people moved on from the G3, right? I mean, it's taken a while. <laughs> there we go. That was quick. Is it going to open stuff at Expander from, like, the Mac OS 9 partition? Nope, it's not. This looks carbonized, though, so, yeah. Ex post facto 4. Ex post facto. Let's put in our password. I think this is, yeah. OWC, serving the Mac universe since 1988. Next post facto is an open source application which you may download and try for free. However, I encourage you to become a registered ex post facto user. I don't care. Not yet. Well, now, what do I do? Alright, looks like what I need to do is insert the Mac OS X install disk for Tiger, which, first of all, I have to use CDs, and second, I think I have a set of Tiger discs, but I have no idea where they are. Thankfully, I have a bunch of blank CDs, and a computer that can burn discs. Actually, multiple. Which is where? This comes in. This is a 2009 MacBook, one of my favorite computers I've ever bought. It's running High Sierra right now, I'm not sure if I'll need an older version of Mac OS in order to flash the Tiger Discs to CD, probably not. But it also has a functional CD drive. Kind of rare for a machine that old. Wow, I'm actually running kind of low on blank discs. I'll need four of these. And access to the internet. Oop, not GitHub Desktop. <laughs> this is for secret projects. Yeah, don't, don't open that on video. That's for secret projects. Oh, Firefox is not for secret projects. In Macintosh Garden. Seriously, remove all of the Mac OS X Tiger discs. Alright, looks like I found ISOs on archive.org, so let's use those instead. I'm gonna download one at a time because archive.org doesn't really like it when you download multiple ISOs. It ends up, it ends up slower in the end because probably throttling your connection or whatever. Turns out the versions on Macintosh Garden, after doing a lot of searching, are actually shadow banned. I'm not sure why, but hopefully the ones on archive.org work. Well, I suppose I can start the burning process while this is going on. So let's put in one of our blank CDs. I hate modern disk utility with the biggest burning passion. I can't even know why these are PDFs. Why are these application? This is a PDF? What? This has the PDF icon, but it's actually an application. What? Why? Why would they do it like that? What? I guess I have to burn from the finder. Never found that particularly reliable. Burn to disk. The disk image is invalid, what? This is not an invalid disk image. I literally mounted it and it worked just fine. Okay, now it burns? That's fine. And burn. 
Oh god, I kept data verification enabled. This is gonna take like five times longer than I want it to. Alright, so I finally got the first disc burned. Um, I'm gonna test out the first disc before trying any of the other discs. And here is the first disc. I'm gonna make sure this thing boots before burning any others because I don't really want to waste my blank CDs. Let's pull out the disk drive here. And head over to X Post Facto. Let's do install from CD. Confirm. Install. Installing extensions, updating extensions cache. All right, synchronizing, copying mock kernel, copying extensions.mkext, and now we reboot. It will reboot automatically into the Mac OS X install DVD, or CD, or it should. I'm gonna make sure it boots up before burning the other three disks, because these other three disks are still on my desk unburned. Hey, that's nice. It automatically um, opened up into our verbose boot. Thought I had to do that manually, maybe. Welcome to the Mac OS X installer. Nice. Looks like everything actually worked. So now I'm going to start burning the second disk and start the process of installing Mac OS X Tiger onto this machine. Continue. Continue, even though I'm breaking every single one of these software licenses, I'm I'm going to click agree anyways. Mac OS 10. Continue. Customize. We're gonna skip our language translations, additional fonts, and printer drivers. And I think that X11 requires disk 3 or disk 4, so I'm going to skip that and install that later. So it, and it's possible that I'll only need um, disk, disk 2 for this. Yep, I'll only need disk 2, that's pretty nice. Checking installation CD, I don't care. In fact, it isn't a genuine install CD, so... Whoa, okay. Well, <laughs> I was just, I was hoping that that didn't, that wouldn't happen. Verify repair, failed with error, negative 9972. Target volume is damaged. Well, I'm going to try restarting. Let's see if it reboots back into Mac OS X or whether it reboots into the disk. Alright, I think it's rebooting into the disk, so... I'll just... let this go and then just wipe the drive. And we're back! Mac OS 10.4 Tiger Installation Take 2! Oh god, what was that accent? <laughs> disk Utility Drive Erase I'm just going to do one partition this time around. Unsupported, iBook HD, erase, erase. And we're back yet again. Let's quit out of disk utility. Click continue, continue, agree, even though I'm breaking every single one of these again, continue. Customize, deselect absolutely everything, and install. Continue installation. Please work. Yay! Looks like things are starting. Nice. Well, I suppose I'll come back when something interesting happens. Alright, it looks like it's booting back up after the installation completed. I'm ready to insert the second install disk. This probably will take a long time to boot since it's on a 4200 RPM hard drive. Ah, oh, finally! Booted all the way up and asked me to insert the second disc. Bye bye, totally legit Mac OS X install disc 1. Hello, totally legit, completely legal.
All right, looks like we are almost done with the installation process. 75% uh, done installing Oxford dictionaries and less than a minute remaining. And of course, less than a minute typically means about 20 minutes to 25 business days. Optimizing system performance, of course. There's, a, there's another stage that the installer didn't tell me about. I, I always wonder what this optimizing system performance actually does. Is this like, does it like defrag the drive or something? I have no idea. The installer will automatically quit in 28 seconds. Well, who has time for that? Nice. Very nice. Oh my god, I can't adjust the volume while playing a video. That's bad, holy crap. United States, do not transfer my information. U.S. keyboard layout. What even is the Canadian keyboard layout? That's right, this isn't Snow Leopard, so I have to do Command-Q, and then click on Skip. Just drop our 39B, our password should be the good old classic on this channel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I live in Cupertino, that's about right. It's gonna get reset anyways. About this Mac. Mac OS X version 10.4, 300 megahertz PowerPC G3, 576 megabytes of RAM. That's just right. It shows up under fire. <laughs> they did not expect people to be running this on machines without firewire, it's completely blank. Let's see if I have gra do we have graphics? I want to make sure we do. Yeah, we do. Although Tiger does not run well on a G3, let alone a 300 megahertz G3 that isn't even officially supported. All right, so there's one last thing that I want to do, and that's not launch software update. Although, yeah, I do actually have an internet connection. Okay, I will. I am gonna actually install updates. Um because well you'll see what i'm what i'm gonna do and that is minecraft so let's go ahead and run me.sh well i guess not all right let's try to run minecraft please enter your username steven p jobs okay looks like i do actually have to go through and run all the java updates because Tiger definitely does support Java 5. Alright, after like 8 Java updates, um, maybe more than that, I'm going to open up, I guess, I have to go to applications, because <laughs> I don't, I, because this app, this, it's so hard to open, um, to open applications on PowerPC Max uh, on Tiger, because there's no, Start menu. Start menu was a good design, Apple. And I'm glad that they added, like, the launch pad and all that. <laughs> Even though I don't really like the launch pad that much. Dot slash run me dot sh. Real. I don't know. What, sh what should I name myself? Real. Steve, real Steve Jobs. I think that might be too long. That's more memory than there is in this computer. 784 megs, that's a bit of a, that's a bit fun. All right, it looks like um, Minecraft is actually gonna launch on an iBook G4 from 2000 and, yeah, 2000, 2000 zero. No. LWJGL exception could not create pixel format. 
only thing I can think of to do is to install Minecraft 1.2.5 instead. It'll probably work better anyways. I guess that Minecraft just doesn't work on a computer from 2000. Imagine my shock. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, despite the fact that I did not get Minecraft running. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the future.